a great cloud of gnats rose as the shutter fell back, and I waved them away from me in a convulsive disgust. Ants crawled undisturbed over the eyelids, the mouths of the dead pair, and in the moonlight I could see the endless map of silvery paths of snails. Damn her! Lestat burst out. I grabbed his arm and held him fast, pitting all my strength against him. What do you mean to do with her? I insisted. What can you do? She's not a child anymore. We must teach her. She knows. He stood back from me from brushing his coat. She knows. She's known for years what to do, what can be risked and what cannot. I won't have her do this without my permission. I won't tolerate it. Then are you master of us all? You didn't teach her that. Was she supposed to imbibe it from my quiet subservience? I don't think so. She sees herself as equal to us now. I tell you, we must reason with her. Instruct her to respect what is ours. He stalked off obviously absorbed in what I had said, though he would not give no admission of it to me. And he took his vengeance to the city. Yet when he came home, fatigued, she was still not there. He sat against the velvet arm of the couch and stretched his long legs out. Did you bury them? He asked me. They're gone, I said. I did not care to say even to myself that I had burned their remains in the old unused kitchen stove. But there is the father to deal with and the brother, I said to him. I feared his temper. I wished at once to plan some way to quickly dispose of the whole problem. But he said now that the father and the brother were no more. That death had come to dinner in their small house near the ramparts and stayed to say grace when everyone was done. Wine, he whispered now, running his finger on his lip. Both of them had drunk too much wine. I found myself tapping the fence posts with a stick to make a tune. He laughed. But I don't like it, the dizziness. Do you like it? And when he looked at me, I had to smile, because the wine was working in him, and he was mellow. And in that moment, when his face looked warm and reasonable, I leaned over to him, and I said, I hear Claudia's tap on the stairs. Be gentle with her. It's all done. She came in then, with her bonnet ribbons undone, and her little boots caked with dirt. I watched them tensely. The stat with a sneer on his lips. She was unconscious of him, as if he wasn't there. She had a bouquet of white chrysanthemums in her arms. The large bouquet made her all the more small. Her bonnet fell back now, and then fell to the carpet. And all through her golden hair I saw the narrow petals of the chrysanthemums. Tomorrow's the feast of all the saints, she said. Do you know? Yes, I said to her. It is the day in New Orleans that all the faithful go to the cemeteries to care for the graves of their loved ones. They whitewash the plaster walls of the vaults, clean the names cut into the marble slabs. And finally, they deck the tombs with flowers. In the St. Louis Cemetery, which was very near our house, in which all the great Louisiana families were buried, in which my own brother was buried. There were even little iron benches where the families might sit to receive the other families who had come to the cemetery for the same purpose. It was a festival in New Orleans, a celebration of death. It might have seemed to tourists who didn't understand it, but it was a celebration of the life after. I brought this from one of the vendors, Claudia said. Her voice was soft and instructable, her eyes opaque and without emotion. For the two you left in the kitchen, Lestat said fiercely. She turned to him for the first time, but she said nothing. She stood there staring at him as if she'd never seen him before. And then she took several steps towards him and looked at him. Still, as if she were positively examining him, I moved forward. I could feel his anger. 
her coldness. And now she turned to me. And then looking from one to the other of us, she asked, Which of you did it? Which of you made me what I am? I could not have been more astonished at anything she might have said or done. And yet it was inevitable that her long silence would thus be broken. She seemed very little concerned with me, though. Her eyes fixed on Lestat. You speak of us as if we always existed as we are now, she said, her voice soft, measured, the child's tone rounded with the woman's seriousness. You speak of them out there as mortals, us as vampires, but it was not always so. Louis had a mortal sister, I remember her, and there is a picture of her in his trunk. I've seen him look at it. He was a mortal the same as she, and so was I. Why else this size, this shape? She opened up her arms and now let the chrysanthemums fall to the floor. I whispered her name. I think I meant to distract her. It was impossible. The tide had turned. Lestat's eyes burned with a keen fascination, a malignant pleasure. You made us what we are, didn't you? She accused him. He raised his eyebrows now in mock amazement. What you are? He asked. And would you be something other than what you are? He drew up his knees and leaned forward, his eyes narrow. Do you know how long it's been? Can you picture yourself? Must I find a hag to show you your mortal countenance now, if I had to let you alone? She turned away from him, stood for a moment, as if she had no idea what she'd do and then she moved towards the chair beside the fireplace, and climbing on it, curled up like the most helpless child. She brought her knees up close to her, her velvet coat open, her silk dress tight around her knees, and she stared at the ashes in the hearth. Her eyes had independent life, as if the body were possessed. You could be dead by now if you were immortal, Lestat insisted to her, pricked by her silence. He drew his legs around and set his boots on the floor. Do you hear me? Why do you ask me this now? Why do you make such a thing of it? You've known all your life you're a vampire. And so he went on in a tirade, saying much of the same things he said to me many times over. Know your nature. Kill be what you are. But all this seemed strangely beside the point, for Claudia had no quarrel about killing. She sat back now and let her head roll slowly to where she could see him across from her. She was studying him again, as if he were a puppet on strings. Did you do it to me? And how? She asked, her eyes narrowing. How did you do it? And why should I tell you? It's my power.